Okay, now we're going to look at writing a script for the media. There's a certain format that has to be followed um, and it's used in television and it's used in um, filmmaking. So here's our first page and you can see that it says here screenplay format by Matt Carlos. So this is actually our title. So we're going to go into a Word document and the first thing we're going to do is set our font to Career New and keeping it at about size 11. Okay. Now the first page you just want to put your title in the center and halfway down the page. So selecting center, and then I'm going to enter down and type in my name. Okay, now you can see that the title's in capitals, and that's what you should be doing. And now I'm just going to insert a new page. So insert blank page and we're going now down to a new page. Okay, so we have our new page and I want to go back to left align. So I'm just going to come back to here. And we need to write a couple of things that tell us how the scene is going to start and where it's set. Okay, so the first thing at the top of the page, I've got the title. So we just know what the um, screenplay is. And then we start with fade in. Now, this is a convention that they always tend to have. Um, you might also want to have it where it says cut to. So it might say cut to. It's just telling you how the scene is going to start. Does it fade in from black or does it just start straight away? Now, the first bit we've got here underneath that, it says X Gladstone Park Day. Now, this is what we call a slug line. So there's three parts to this. The first part has either X or sometimes it can have int. And what they tell us is whether it's inside or outside. So these are short for interior or exterior. Then we have the location. And then we just have day or we have night. We don't bother about morning or afternoon because actually once you film it, people really can't tell the difference. Um, and it's just important for the people who actually are making the film, finding the locations, they just need to have an idea of where and when you're going to be filming it. Okay, so next we're now going to get into describing the action. Okay, so now just writing in lowercase, normal case, um, the dial the directions for this scene. Now, one of the important things is keeping it to the point and only write what you will see on the screen. We don't need any story about the background of the person, uh, what they've been doing before this. All we want to see is what will be on the screen now. So you can imagine here in this park, there's people. Um, I'm going to change that so it makes sense. People walk about the park. A man pushes an old lady in a wheelchair. In the distance, a young boy throws a stick for his dog to chase. It's all in the present tense, so everything happens now. You wouldn't say a boy threw a stick. It's a boy throws a stick because we see it happening now. So now I've got a paragraph of text here about our main character. And our main character is called David. And I've put his name in capital letters so that the actor playing him will know uh, where his part is. And so again, present tense, rides through the gate in the distance and comes up to the park bench, gets off his bike, sits down and takes out his phone. And now we're going to look at when David actually speaks. So we need to make sure we've pressed enter to leave some space. And we're now going to indent David's name and the dialogue so that it's easy for him to read and it stands out as dialogue rather than the action. Okay, so now I want this line here to be where David's text is, where his dialogue is. And at the minute, if I have it like this, it's not going to stand out. So if I've got my dialogue underneath and I paste it in, that at the minute looks like it's more description of the scene. So I'm going to get David and I'm going to press the tab key, which is to the left of the queue. I'm going to press that twice. Actually, three times is better. And then with our dialogue here, I'm going to bring that in twice. And then the next line... And so now, when the actor who's playing David comes to read it, they'll be able to see where their dialogue is. Sometimes you've got to press backspace and enter a few times to get it right. But now you can see how, when he's reading through, that will stand out. OK, so now I've filled in some more text here. And you can see that we've got, once again, a slug line, the description written in present tense, we then got the indented name and the dialogue, and then I've put some more dialogue for the character here. So you can really see that the dialogue stands out 
from the description so that there's no confusion about what needs to be said. Now, there are some times when you might need to put in some description about how the actor says a particular thing. So like here, I've put in pause in brackets. Then in the middle of a sentence, pauses again. That way then the actor knows how to say something, but don't go overboard because some actors don't like being told how to say absolutely everything. Okay, so now we've got the final line of instruction here saying David walks out the shop and waves to Andy as he leaves. So that's not indented, that's just on the left of the page. And then the last bit, we're going to show that the scene's ending. So we're going to say cut to, that means it's going to cut to the, it's going to go to the next scene. But we don't want that to get mixed up with any of the directions or the actions. So we're actually going to tell this to go to the right hand side over here. Uh, so if we just do this, the line text right. And so now we know that that's the end of the scene. So now here's my next scene. And so I've got it at the int David's bedroom day. So it's daytime. It's inside because it's got int and it's telling us the location. So we've got David sleeps down, on, face down on his bed, fully clothed. His left foot hangs off the edge of the bed. There is a knock at the door. Now, anything that's a sound effect that you might want to add in later on normally gets written in capital letters, so they also stand out. So someone whose job is to do sound effects can go through and they can find any sound effects in the script quite easily and just highlight them. So if a car explodes, it would be written in explode in capital letters, or if the crashing glass, all the same sort of thing, write them in capital letters. Now we've got to format this next bit of text so that it's correct. So we're going to get his mum's knocking on the door, so we're going to indent her three times and then get the text again twice, move that along. Now I've put here in brackets OS because David's mum's not actually visible on screen, but we can hear her voice shouting at him through the door. So that means she's off screen. So David, get up, you've got to go to work. It's half past 10 already. Don't make me come in there and drag you out of bed. So we're actually hearing her voice, but we're not seeing her. So we're just making the direction to say her voice is off screen. Now there's one more situation where you might actually have another instruction after a person's name and that's if you had someone like a narrator. So let's say for example here I've got my narrator, I put VO at the end of it and the VO stands for voiceover. So then we've got here what the narrator would say. So after a big night out, David has slept in, he's now late for work, this is the third time it's happened this month. So let's just quickly go back over the rules of writing a script that we've learned so far. So the first page just the title, centered, capital letters, and then the author's name in lowercase beneath that. We then have the title at the top, and we have cut to, which tells us how the scene's going to start. We then have what's called a slug line, which gives us the location, telling us int or ext, location, time of day. Description of what's happening, written in the present tense. The names of the characters in any action are written in capitals, and then we indent using the tab key, which is next to the queue, three times for the name, twice for the dialogue. Any dis dis directions or instructions will be in brackets here or in the middle of the text. Then again, same slug line, um, int for interior, night for night. And then lastly, we have this cut to, which tells us how the scene will end. And if we've got another scene with any, anyone speaking, uh, but they may not be seen on the screen, then we can either use OS for off-screen or VO for voiceover. So let's get cracking, and good luck writing your scripts. Uh, if there's any problems with these, you can always look in the shared area, and there's a folder called TV and Radio Scripts with lots of different examples that you can have a look at.